In this video, I'm going to talk about the ultrasound artifacts that are pertinent to nephrology practice. So what is ultrasound artifact? An artifact represents an acoustic image that does not correspond to the analyzed anatomic structure. Essentially, artifact is a false reflection. And why does it occur? It could be because of improper scanning technique, or it could be because of the physical limitations of the ultrasound machine. And sometimes the artifacts can be useful or sometimes they can be undesirable and confuse us while performing interpretation. So what are the physical limitations of the ultrasound machine? These are essentially the assumptions made by the machine in order to display the image. The first one is the machine thinks the sound travels in straight lines but sound can take curved pathways also. And it also thinks that sound travels at a constant speed of 1540 meters per second. But mild variations do occur, and in general, the propagation speed of the sound through gases is low, uh, through liquids is higher, and it's highest in the solids. Another thing is the echo returns to the transducer after a single reflection. This is not true because multiple reflections can occur. And other presumption is attenuation of the sound is uniform throughout the scan plane. Attenuation is the loss of energy of the sound beam uh, when it uh, passes through a structure. Uh, but some structures like cysts are excellent transmitters of sound waves, while there are structures like stones and calcifications that are strong attenuators. So this assumption is not uh, true. And it also assumes that the time taken for the echo to return back to the transducer is directly related to the depth of the object. Uh, we talked about this in the introductory physics video. If the echo takes less time to reach back to the probe, the machine interprets that the structure is closer and displays it on the top of the screen. And if the echoes take longer, it interprets as being far. This is true for the most part, but there are exceptions which result in artifacts. First important artifact is acoustic shadowing. When an object does not transmit the sound, uh, which means it either absorbs or reflects all the sound waves you are hitting it with, there will be a loss of signal beyond the structure, appearing as hypoechoic or anechoic band, similar to the shadow which is formed when you obstruct the light. Because the shadow is related to sound, it is called acoustic shadowing. And the shadowing artifact is caused by partial or complete attenuation of the ultrasound beam along its path. And shadows are classified either as clean or dirty. Shadowing deep to large calcified structures uh, that absorb the ultrasound beam uh, have a defined margin and they are called clean shadows. And shadowing caused by air, for example, bubble gas, has margins that are obscured and it is defined as a dirty shadow. Here you can see nice and clean shadowing uh, from a gallstone. This is the transfer section of the gallbladder. And this echogenic structure here is stone in the gallbladder. And you see a nice clean shadow. Similarly, this is the ultrasound image of the kidney. And you see the refractile or bright structure here in the lower pole of the kidney, casting a nice, long, clean shadow. And here is example of a stone in the urinary bladder. This is a big bright stone here, uh, which is causing a clean shadow. And this image shows bowel gas um, showing scattered shadows. So remember, air is white on the ultrasound. So these little white things represent air, and they are giving shadows. And because air moves, the bowel gas moves, uh, the shadows are ill-defined, and they tend to move around. So while some shadows are useful, um, such as to identify the kidney stone or gallbladder stone, some shadows like bowel gas shadow hinder you from um, examining the structures that are deeper to those shadows. The next important artifact is acoustic enhancement. When the ultrasound beam encounters a structure that is an excellent transmitter of sound waves, such as a cyst, the amplitude of the beam beyond this structure is relatively increased than the beam amplitude of the surrounding tissue at the same depth. 
This phenomena is opposite of acoustic shadowing and it is called acoustic enhancement. This artifact is helpful in diagnosing cystic lesions. But remember that any localized clear fluid collection such as gallbladder, urinary bladder or big blood vessels can demonstrate enhancement. So this is the example of uh, cyst in the kidney. So here is the kidney and uh, in the lower part of this right kidney there is a huge cyst and you are seeing this bright area here which corresponds to the acoustic enhancement. And this is image from a patient with uh, polycystic kidney disease. You see multiple cysts in the kidney here which give this acoustic enhancement uh, beneath them. And uh, this is the image of a urinary bladder transfer section which uh, is filled with anechoic urine uh, and acts as excellent transmitter of sound waves. So this one also gives this bright um, enhanced area beneath it. And uh, this is the image of a transfer section of a gallbladder uh, with the anechoic bile in it giving acoustic enhancement. While acoustic enhancement helps you to identify cystic structures or structures containing clear fluid, Sometimes unwanted enhancement um, may hinder you from examining the deeper structures. So for example, um, in this bladder image, you see this lot of uh, white thing here. So um, if there is a small stone, say in the distal ureter, because ureters come from here and open into the posterior aspect of the bladder. So if there is a small stone in the distal ureter in this area, you can easily miss because of this uh, super bright area here. So what do you use? Uh, remember uh, from our physics video, we talked about the time gain compensation. Gain is a term used to um, indicate brightness of the ultrasound image, while time gain compensation is essentially like a partial gain and it is used to adjust the brightness of one particular part of the image. So you'll find these sliding buttons like this somewhere on the machine. Um, and each of these sliding buttons correspond to various depths on the screen. So if you move these lower two buttons to the left, uh, this lower part of the image uh, brightness will decrease. And if you move the upper buttons, the brightness of the upper part of the image will decrease. So after you adjust the time gain compensation, the bladder image will become like this and this brightness here disappears. So you can see if there is any stone or some abnormal um, uh, structure here. Next artifact that you would commonly encounter while performing abdominal scans is mirror artifact. Mirror artifact is produced from a strong specular reflector such as diaphragm which acts as a mirror when it is adjacent to air filled lung especially, that is normal lung. The transmitted ultrasound beam, here represented by green arrows, encounters the target, say for example, um, uh, yeah, this patient has hemangioma in the liver. So this transmitted beam encounters the hemangioma and it is nicely reflected back to the probe. So the machine displays hemangioma in its correct location. Now there is another ultrasound beam here, these red arrows. They are transmitted from the probe, hit the diaphragm and the diaphragm uh, acts as a specular reflector or the mirror and some waves directly go into the machine and display the diaphragm wherever it is but some waves go and hit the hemangioma from the alternate pathway and the reflected waves from the hemangioma instead of going directly to the machine go back to the diaphragm and are reflected back in the original path to reach back to the probe and because of the increased time to, uh, to the echo um, to return the image that is the dotted circle here now appears to be deep to the diaphragm which looks as if there is another lesion above the diaphragm and it is not just specific to hemangioma or a certain liver lesion but you will see uh, both liver and spleen above the diaphragm in normal scans depending on uh, the location of your probe. This is the image uh, where it shows this is the abdomen, this is the lung region because this part is below the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a fibrous structure that appears white on ultrasound. So 
in abdominal mode the screen indicator is here so this is towards patient's head this is towards patient's feet and you have the liver here you have a this uh, echoic structure uh, that is hemangioma and because diaphragm acts as a mirror and um, and a specular reflector now you see hemangioma as if it's above the diaphragm that is falsely displayed in the lung area and similarly even if you don't have any lesions you can just see um, the part of the liver tissue above the diaphragm this is also a mirror artifact that commonly occurs and similarly on the left side you can see spleen um, above the diaphragm so in this image this is the uh, normal mirror artifact showing a uh, lesion being reflected in the uh, lung area and the importance of knowing the uh, occurrence of this normal mirror artifact is that you will not see this artifact when the patient has pleural effusion because this diaphragm is no longer uh, adjacent to the air filled lung instead there is fluid here which is a good transmitter of sound waves so this diaphragm doesn't act as a mirror anymore so if you have pleural effusion you will see this black thing here above the diaphragm but not the mirror artifact and Another circumstance where you can see mirror artifact is uh, sometimes bladder acts as a mirror. The anterior wall of the bla bladder can act as a mirror when it's lying adjacent to the um, bowel filled with gas. And you can see a mirror reflection of the bladder in the pelvis, which can sometimes be confusing uh, uh, and mimic a pelvic cyst. So how do we get rid of this problem? So when in doubt, just repeat the examination after emptying the bladder and then if that cystic structure disappears that means it's a mirror reflection of the bladder and if it persists it is a real cyst and note this um, in this image you're also seeing the acoustic enhancement from the bladder even from the mirror reflection now is this a mirror artifact so this is the ultrasound exam of the lower part of the lung, you're not able to clearly see the diaphragm here, but diaphragm would be somewhere here. And this is the lower lung, and it pretty much appears like liver. So is it mirror artifact or no? It is not because the mirror artifact should look exactly like the liver. So what are these white things here? So as we discuss in the lung ultrasound video, these represent dynamic air bronchograms. Remember, air is white on ultrasound. So these moving white things represent air, and this is a consolidated lung. And these are sometimes compared to wiggly worms and uh, helps you identify uh, infectious pneumonia. The next artifact is edge shadowing artifact. Ultrasound machine assumes the beam travels along a straight line and will reconstruct the image without accounting for any refraction that is occurring. Therefore, the edges of structures and the relationships of objects may actually be slightly different than they appear. Edge shadowing is a refractive artifact essentially that occurs at edge of a large curved boundary with a different speed of the sound than of the surrounding structures like this object here. And this is frequently observed at the lateral edges of a structure such as cyst or soft tissue mass and appears as hypoechoic, almost parallel lines projecting distal to the edges of the structure. See the sound waves bend here at this uh, curved object uh, and uh, there will be shadows here in the original straight pathway of the ultrasound waves. And clinically it's important not to confuse edge shadowing um, such as uh, that from a vessel in the renal sinus with true shadowing um, which would suggest a stone or other highly reflective focus such as a calcification. Edge shadowing can be um, seen here uh, with the cyst like this. Uh, so this is a cystic structure and these are the shadows coming from the edges. Here is the example of another cyst in the lower pole of the kidney uh, giving some shadows um, from, from the side. And how to get rid of the edge shadowing artifact? It can be decreased or eliminated by changing the angle of insonation. That is just change the direction of the probe and examine the same spot from another angle.
beam width artifact is another artifact that you would commonly encounter, especially while you are doing um, bladder ultrasound. So at the exit from the transducer, the main ultrasound beam is approximately as wide as the transducer. Here, this one. And it narrows at the approach of the focal zone. So here is the focal zone and the beam narrows. And focal zone is the point where you get the best focus uh, in the ultrasound image. And it is adjustable. And this ultrasound beam again widens as it has passed the focal zone and sometimes the distal widening may exceed the actual width of the transducer uh, and a highly ref reflective object located in this widened beam like this uh, rectangular structure here may produce echoes uh, which the machine assumes are arising from the narrow focal zone and displays them superimposed on the original object here which is in the straight pathway of the ultrasound beam. So this object is in the beam, uh, the original straight beam, and this object is in the widened false beam, and the machine puts this object on top of this object. So here is an example of urinary bladder with this hyperechoic thing here uh, that you can confuse with uh, some debris in the uh, urinary bladder or clot in the bladder, but it's actually um, uh, the beam width artifact that is coming from the bubble gas and so how do we correct this beam width artifact so you should place the object of interest within the center of the focal zone and the falsely displayed echoes generated by the peripheral object will disappear so you see this object here so if you bring this object to here into the focal zone so like this um, now this object is outside the original ultrasound beam pathway so this will disappear unless you want to focus specifically on on this particular uh, object so by bringing the focal zone uh, to the area of interest this beam width artifact will disappear so focal zone is usually um, indicated by arrows or hourglass uh, symbols varying um, with the manufacturer but you will you'll find the focal zone button on the machine and you can bring it to whichever part of the um, image you want to see clearly. So here is the partially filled urinary bladder with some uh, um, echogenicities in, uh, in the lumen and when you bring the focal zone to that particular area these things disappear. So you know that it is an artifact and not some debris in the urinary bladder. So another artifact that you would see while performing urinary bladder ultrasound is called secondary lobe artifact or side lobe artifact. The sound beam is not always single and straight. This illustration shows multiple secondary lobes occurring around the primary beam. This primary beam is the yellow thing and these blue and red things are secondary lobes. And more specifically these have names, these red beams are called side lobes which are of low energy, up to 1% of the primary beam, and they are off-axis, immediately adjacent to the primary beam, uh, occurring in all transducers. While these blue lines, also called uh, grating lobes, and these grating lobes occur at more oblique angles and may be stronger and they are transducer dependent. A highly reflective object, that is, say, this black square, immediately adjacent to the current beam position can uh, reflect these secondary lobes, falsely displaying those echoes at the beam position, this white square here. As the beam width artifact, uh, this phenomena is most likely to be recognized as extraneous echoes present within an um, anechoic structure such as the bladder. This is the longitudinal image of a normal gallbladder demonstrating side lobe artifact in the lumen, uh, this hyperechoic thing here, which arises from the adjacent echogenic wall that is in the pathway of these side lobes. And uh, this is an example of urinary bladder displaying these uh, hyperechoic uh, structure inside the anechoic lumen representing the side lobe artifact. So what is the significance of this side lobe artifact? Additional unnecessary echoes may be mistaken for septa or uh, sediment in the bladder. And how do we get rid of this artifact? 
it's simply by angling the transducer or just changing the scan plane, uh, these false echoes will disappear because uh, the highly refractive object is not in the pathway of these side lobes or secondary lobes anymore. Reverberation artifact. Reverberation artifact is generated when the ultrasound beam is perpendicular to a strong reflector, such as a soft tissue air interface or to the abdominal wall with a considerable depth of subcutaneous tissue in obese patients. The classic example of reverberation artifact is A-lines in the lung. And as you know, A-line is a very useful artifact and represents an air-filled lung, which is normal. Because the lung is filled with air, which is a strong reflector, uh, we rely on artifacts for our diagnosis for any pathologies um, in the lung, such as A-lines, B-lines, Z-lines, and um, several such things. Um, these arise when the ultrasound beam reflects off the pleura and these ones, and rather than entering the ultrasound transducer, partially reflects back off the probe to the pleura again, like these blue things, before returning finally to the ultrasound transducer. This double length pathway is interpreted and displayed uh, as if the source of reflection lies at twice the distance between pleura and the skin. So this reflection um, is represented here and this is the true reflection from the pleural line this orange thing and that means if the echo from a structure takes longer time to reach back to the probe the machine thinks the structure is far and displaced at the bottom of the screen multiple reverberations like this are depicted at uh, varying pleural depths and you see them as multiple equidistant uh, horizontal lines though um, the ones that are closer to the pleura appear more bright compared to the ones that are farther from the pleura. And in lung it's useful, but when the same reverberation artifact occurs in the bladder, again um, it can interfere with the interpretation of the anatomy. So in the bladder this can occur from anterior wall of the urinary bladder, especially in obese people. The sound pulse is reflected back from the anterior wall of the bladder to the transducer face and as the transducer has to produce a true echo, it absorbs some of the pulse. However, some of the sound is reflected back from the transducer skin interface and back into the body. It again hits the anterior bladder interface and it's reflected back for a second time um, to the transducer. This continues and multiple equidistant lines of decreasing energy are produced, which we call the reverberation. And how do we rectify this artifact here in the bladder? B just by changing the direction of the beam. Or use more gel to minimize air soft tissue interface reflection. Uh, sometimes reducing the overall gain of the image would help. And if you are applying too much pressure on the bladder, uh, try to reduce it and sometimes it really helps. The ring down artifact. Ring down artifact is a special form of reverberation artifact that usually occurs at air fluid interface. This occurs when there is a specific type of uh, air fluid interface actually that is formed when the fluid in the interlobular septa uh, of the lung is trapped between four bubbles of alveolar air that is also called the tetrahedron model. When the ultrasound beam reaches these air bubbles, these things here, it is capable of exciting the liquid trapped in between these bubbles, this one. Uh, now the liquid resonates and each vibration causes a continuous source of sound energy that is transmitted back to the transducer and it's represented as a line, this red line. And when this happens in quick succession, as this fluid keeps resonating and keeps making these horizontal lines, multiple close horizontal lines uh, appear like a vertical streak, which we call B-line in the lung. This is the lung ultrasound, where this is the pleural line, this bright line, this horizontal line, and B-lines arise from the pleural line when there is increased lung water, or when you have essentially congestion or pulmonary edema, and they go to the end of the screen as vertical streaks. So B-line is a very useful artifact uh, that helps us to um, diagnose hypervolemia um, by lung ultrasound. And the same artifact can occur in abdomen also. 
and helps us identify some serious conditions such as uh, in this example here this is liver and uh, um, this is the biliary tract here and you see this hyperechoic white things that represents air and because it has the bile fluid also so it forms an ideal um, air fluid interface which produces ring down artifacts so this tail here is the ring down artifact produced by the air in the biliary tract which is um, a very serious condition that if you are able to identify this um, it has to be rectified immediately and uh, this is an example of uh, ring down artifact in the kidney this is a transplanted kidney with emphysematous pyelonephritis um, that means air in the collecting system and parenchyma of the kidney so this white thing is air here here and uh, they give sh some shadowing and in addition to that they are producing this uh, uh, lines that appear like B lines in the lung which is the ring down artifact and these tend to move because the air in the collecting system moves in the urine and if you identify this you are probably dealing with um, emphysematous pyelonephritis or it could be just sometimes very benign thing like the patient has undergone some urologic procedure um, and uh, uh, that uh, pushes some air into the collecting system so in that case it could just be a normal thing comet tail artifact so this is another type of reverberation artifact which is very similar to ring down artifact um, and actually both these terms are used interchangeably sometimes but the mechanism of comet tail is thought to be more similar to the formation of lung A lines than the tetrahedron model of B lines. You can imagine this as closely placed arrangement of A lines and it is typically seen when the beam comes into contact with uh, metal objects such as metal clips of suture or needles or foreign bodies or even calcifications such as um, you see in granulomas or cholelithiasis, calcified myomas uh, and sometimes even nephrolithiasis. This image here shows cholesterolosis polyps. This is the gallbladder um, ultrasound image. This is the liver and here is the comet tail artifact coming from the cholesterolosis. Cholesterolosis is essentially abnormal deposits of cholesterol um, in macrophages within the lamina propria and in the mucosal epithelium of gallbladder. And this image here shows uh, metal endo processes inside the hepatic ducts giving rise to the comet tail artifact. Twinkle artifact or it's also called twinkle sign uh, as we discussed in another video it's a helpful artifact that is um, used to recognize stones and calcified structures. Uh, this is the grayscale ultrasound image of the kidney showing this echogenic structures that is stones with nice acoustic shadowing and here is a grayscale image of the urinary bladder with this uh, bright structure that is stone with shadowing and when you turn on the color doppler mode stones appear as rapidly alternating foci of intense color signals resembling turbulent flow that is more pronounced with rougher stones so here you see these things uh, the same uh, area now when you turn on the color doppler uh, these are showing up as if uh, you would expect in a turbulent uh, flow of the blood and here is the same thing so many nice colors here and sometimes twinkling can be seen just on the stone like this or you can have a band or tail past it like you are seeing in this thing and it, it high is dependent on the machine doppler settings and uh, this artifact is uh, very helpful for detection of small stones um, when they don't have prominent shadowing And these are some nice articles out there if you want to read more about ultrasound artifacts. Um, I have discussed the common artifacts that we encounter in um, nephrology practice but there are other artifacts that you might want to know more about um, and these are nice articles. And thank you and if you have any questions or any comments um, you can contact me uh, using this Twitter handle which is a dedicated handle for nephrology oriented point of care ultrasonography. Thank you.